What's up everybody, my name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So if you're struggling with your audio quality, you may be tempted to buy a dedicated microphone to improve your work calls, live streaming, content creation, maybe even start a podcast or just talk with your friends whilst gaming so that they can actually hear you properly. Some of you may not want to spend too much cash on this, but today we're gonna to be looking at a very affordable microphone by Tonor, the Tonor TC30 USB microphone, which comes in just at $37.99 and has over a whopping 8,500 4.5 star ratings over on Amazon. We're here to help you answer the question, is it actually any good though or should you pass on this one? So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for tech related content as it really does help to support us. At just $37.99, this microphone is very accessible. But what does it come with? Will you need to then spend more money on stands, cables, or audio interfaces? Well, luckily not, as Tonar have included everything you need for a truly plug and play experience from this USB setup. Inside the box, you'll find the microphone itself, a tripod desk stand, a shock mount, a pop filter, and a USB cable. There's not much assembly required as the stand, shock mount, and microphone are pre-installed, so just take them out of the box and you're ready to go, really. The only thing you're required to do is attach the pop filter, but this just slides into the top of the shock mount and it's really easy to do so. Make sure to push the microphone back a bit, though, so there's around an inch between the pop filter and the top of the microphone. Microphone. Lastly, all you need to do is plug the included cable into the base of the mic and then into an available USB-A port on your PC. So let me tell you things that I like and don't like about this setup. So first up, which is a huge positive for me, is the detachable USB cable. This cable is two meters in length. It has a USB-A 2.0 for the PC and a USB-C for the microphone, which is actually great if your PC or laptop is slightly further away. The cable comes kinked, but I can overlook this purely because the cable is detachable. Having a detachable cable future-proofs the mic as if the cable dies, then it's easy to buy a new one rather than having to purchase a whole new microphone as many USB mics do not have detachable cables. Despite not being a fan of desktop mic stands, just because they can introduce noise from vibrations being carried up to the mic's capsule, the included small tripod is actually very sturdy with metal legs instead of plastic. On the base, there are large rubber feet to stop it skidding around and also provides some vibration resistance. As I always say in my mic reviews, buy a cheap boom arm if possible, but at the end of the day, this included stand does the job at no extra expense. On the top of the tripod, we have the plastic shock mount. I have two issues with this, but they're not the end of the world at this price point. My first issue is the fact that the adjustment area only moves forward and back to tilt the microphone towards or away from you. There isn't a ball joint to angle it precisely where you want. The good thing is that you can unscrew the tripod legs entirely to then screw the shock mount onto a boom arm if you have one. The negatives here is the fact that the housing is made out of plastic. So if you're going to unscrew and screw it onto different mic arms, then eventually the metal thread from the arms will wear the plastic threads on the Tonor's shock mount. It's not the end of the world though, and honestly, I'm impressed that they've included a shock mount at all and a pop filter. The mount is plastic and inside there are rubber bands that grip the microphone's body to suspend it in the middle. These bands then aim to reduce vibrations reaching the microphone to stop unwanted noise, thuds, and more. We'll of course test this out later during our testing. The pop filter is a nice size. It's not overly large as found on other microphones and it has Tonor's name on the front of it. You may have noticed on the top of the microphone that it's pointing towards the pop filter rather than having the pop filter on the side and that's because the cap of the microphone is pointing towards the top so you don't talk into the side of it you have to talk into the top of it. I personally prefer this design anyway so that's kind of a bonus for me. Looking at the microphone itself it's a fully plastic design and yes it does feel budget but the build quality is actually pretty good. There are no rough edges, the different plastic parts fit well together and the USB-C port on the bottom is easily accessible and it's not loose or anything like that. We have Tonor's name again on the side alongside a picture of a whale, which is their logo. The only non-plastic part of the mic is the capsule guard, which is a black mesh running across the top and down the sides. 
you'll notice that there's no controls on the microphone whatsoever. So there's no headphone jack, there's no gain control knobs, or even a mute button. So everything has to be controlled via the device that is being plugged into. I'm perfectly fine with this, but for some, this may be frustrating as I do see why people like having a physical mute button or a gain knob at least for quick adjustments on the fly. So setting up the TC30 couldn't be easier. On PC, just plug it into any 2.0 USB port or above. In my case, Windows 10 automatically detected the device and set it as the default recording device, so it worked straight away. If you're not so lucky though, for whatever reason, go to Control Panel, go to Sound, Recording Tab, and then find the microphone. Double click to open the properties menu, and here you can set the levels. Luckily, the manual does explain this process, which is actually a nice touch. Let me quickly go over the type of microphone this is and its pickup pattern, as this may help you decide whether this microphone suits your needs or not. This is a condenser microphone, so the capsule is very sensitive with a wide frequency response. This means that it will pick up almost all sounds from surrounding areas, as opposed to dynamic microphones that are almost the opposite. They reject more noise and frequencies, but you do need to be very close to the microphones for them to work properly. With the TC30 being a condenser mic, if you turn the sensitivity right up, you will hear PC fans, keyboard noise, and you can even pick up noise from outside, like cars driving around or anything like that. So be wary of what is happening around you or in your house. That's why it's always best to have it turned down via control panel to around 70% or slightly less to try and avoid unnecessary sounds. It also has a cardioid pickup pattern, and this means that it picks up everything in front of the microphone whilst aiming to minimize frequencies behind the capsule. With a wide frequency response, the benefit is great vocal clarity as it picks up all the frequencies within your voice rather than cutting out the highs and lows like dynamic mics can often do. Condenser microphones like this one from Tonor are excellent for single person use, whether that's voiceovers, voice calls, single person live streaming, etc. But they aren't good for things like podcasts, where two people are in the same room using two microphones, because this can cause feedback and echoing. If you're planning on doing a podcast with two people and two mics, then I highly recommend you look for a dynamic microphone as used in radio shows instead of condenser mics like this one. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, does it actually sound any good? Well, these tests are completely dry recordings with no post-processing at all. I won't add any effects or anything like that to these clips, other than maybe increasing the volume if I need to. So this is a microphone test of the TC30. I'm about 20 centimeters away from the top of the capsule, and I don't have the pop filter on. So let's see if it has any plosives. So Peter, Parker, see how that sounds. I'm now going to attach the pop filter, so give me one second. And I'm still at the exact same distance away, so around 20 centimeters away, and let's say the same thing, so Peter, Parker, see how that sounds. I have the microphone set to 70% in the control panel window, and I'm just going to type, just so that you can hear any typing in the background. So here's a typing test. And now I'm going to talk over it whilst I'm typing, just to see if you can hear that. I do have a fan on in the background, so a heater, which is probably about four or five meters away from me. And I do have my computer probably about a foot to my left on as well. So what I'm actually going to do now is move the microphone volume from 70% up to 100% gain in the control panel window. And I won't talk just because it will probably be overly loud, but I'm going to stay quiet just to see if you can hear any unwanted noise from the room.
and now I've brought it back down to 70%. I'm just going to tap on the desk now just to see if you can hear how much the shock mount absorbs some of the noise. You will still hear some of the noise, but it won't be as bad as if, you know, we weren't using the shock mount. So I'm just going to tap lightly. So that's a very gentle tap on the desk. Now I'm going to tap a little bit harder. And I'm tapping maybe six inches away from the base of the microphone stand. Now I'm going to tap a bit harder. And there you go. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how this microphone sounds. Again, if I sort of bring myself back a little bit so I'm about 20 centimeters away from the top of the capsule now I'm now going to keep talking at the same volume but I'm actually sitting further back so I'm probably about 30 to possibly 50 centimeters away from the top of the microphone now and of course I haven't changed the gain so you can hear what it sounds this is at 70 percent like I said before and if I come back now I'm still speaking the same volume um, and I'm now back at around 20 centimeters so hopefully this has been a good test for you to hear how the TC30 sounds. Well, personally, I wasn't expecting much from a sub 40 pound microphone that includes a stand, a pop filter and a shock mount, but I'm very pleasantly surprised. I think it sounds brilliant. It captures the frequencies of my voice very clearly. And I think if I was blindfolded, I wouldn't have guessed that this microphone produced recordings like that. Of course, I highly recommend you use the included pop filter and shock mount at all times. And I also recommend that you remain around 15 centimeters away from the microphone, depending on what gain setting you have set. Also, if possible, like I said before, buy a cheap boom arm to clamp to your desk, but with its plug and play design and wide range of frequencies being captured via the condenser capsule, I think the audio quality per pound spent is actually very good, especially as you're getting a stand, pop filter, shock mount, and a microphone that has a detachable cable, all for less than 40 pounds. So if you're on a restricted budget, then yes, this is excellent. I'd recommend this microphone for anyone looking to improve the quality of their business meeting calls, gaming with friends online, content creation, doing voiceovers and more. If you've got a bigger budget though, I'd recommend buying an audio interface with good preamps that can accept XLR cables like a Focusrite Scarlett Solo, which are around hundred pounds. And then you can get either an XLR condenser microphone for around 80 pounds, like the Audio-Technica AT2020, or a dynamic XLR microphone such as the Rode Podcaster Pro, which we have two of here, and they are excellent by the way. And these are around hundred pounds each, but bear in mind, you'll have to also purchase a boom arm to take their weight, which will then set you back another hundred pounds or so. If money is no object, then just buy the best of the best. Just get yourself a Shure SM7B, but these are around 350 pounds for the microphone alone. So as you can see, the price quickly stacks up when you start chasing great audio quality. And for that reason alone, for the very affordable nature of the Tonor TC30 at just 38 pounds, I definitely recommend it as the audio quality really isn't reflected by its price point. So what do you guys think of the Tonor TC30? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like and subscribe button, check out our merchandise down below, and don't forget to check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.